All right, folks, welcome to day 13. Today, we'll have a look at the n plus 1 problem. Let's review an example. So in my routes file, we have an endpoint for jobs. This fetches all jobs from the database and then loads a jobs view. I can command click on that in my editor to go directly to it. Now, if we have a look at this in the browser, this is what we get. Not the prettiest thing in the world. So you know what? Why don't we take 60 seconds and turn each of these items into a card of sorts? To start, let's swap out the unordered list for a simple div. And then for each card, this could be a div, it could be an article, or it could even be an anchor tag. That way the entire card is clickable. So why don't we try that out? I'm going to make the anchor tag a block level element. And then what we'll do is maybe add some padding on the left and right, uh, a little bit more on the top and bottom, and maybe we'll have a border, and then maybe a color of border gray 200, maybe something like that. Okay, next we don't want blue text, so I will delete that entirely, and I will remove the hover styling. All right, let's see what we have. So back to the browser, give it a refresh, and yeah, that's looking just a little bit better. The only remaining thing might be to make each of them rounded, and then I want a bit of space in between each one. So I'll show you a little trick. On the parent element, you could do something like space Y4, and that'll add just a little bit of uh, margin in between each of the individual items, and I think that looks fine. Okay, so now notice the entire thing is clickable, and it takes me to the actual job page. Cool. All right, so now the next step is I'd like to display the employer right above the job title here. So let's do that. Okay, so I will select this and mm, why don't we wrap it? It could be a span. I'm just going to do a simple div here. It's not really a paragraph, so I wouldn't do that. Uh, maybe there's an argument for that, though. And then above it, we'll have another div where I echo the job employer. So there's our belongs to relationship and then the name of the employer. Okay, let's have a look. Come back, give it a refresh. All right, next, why don't we add a little emphasis? So let's make it bold. Uh, I'm gonna make it blue. It's not a link currently, but it, it eventually would be, wouldn't it? So that's okay. And at that point, it does become a link. We'll swap that out with an anchor tag. Okay, so now for every job listing, we can see the employer's name, the job title, and the salary. It's looking pretty good. Okay, but now we have introduced a bit of a problem. And that problem is called the N plus one problem. Okay, so what's the issue? Well, do you remember an episode or two ago where I mentioned that when you reference the relationship, a new SQL query will be performed? And I called that lazy loading. All right, well, how does lazy loading work within the context of a loop? Could we end up in a situation where for each item in the loop, you execute another SQL query to load the employer? Uh, could that happen? And the answer is 100% yes. And that's specifically where the name N plus one comes from. Okay, so now I want to illustrate this and I'll show you two ways to do that. All right, first up, Laravel debug bar. So you can search for it. Here's the direct URL. I'll let you take a look at that. And yeah, it's going to add a helpful debug bar to the bottom of your browser window. And notice it'll have tabs for messages or exceptions or your views or your database queries that are being executed or the models that are being loaded. It's incredibly helpful. Okay, so why don't we install this? Notice I can pull it in through Composer. And I will paste this in. Okay, so you've learned at this point that Composer is a package manager. So if I want to pull in some kind of a tool or library or helper, I can simply require it using Composer, and that will pull in all of the necessary files. It'll pull in the package. Cool. Okay, so we can see that Laravel uses auto discovery, so it doesn't require you to manually do anything. It should just work out of the box as long as your app debug setting is set to true. All right, so where would that be? It's going to be within your environment file. And that'll be in the root of your project right here. And notice at the top, app debug is set to true. But of course, in production, it's set to false. And that way we can ensure that you never display a debug bar in a production environment. Okay, so let's go back to the browser and have a look. Give it a refresh, and there you go. You instantly have a new debug bar. All right, so I want you to notice queries right here. 12 SQL queries are being performed. It seems like a bit much, doesn't it? Let's have a look. All right, so we have one for sessions. We can ignore that. 
But notice we have a query to select all from job listings. And then right down here, yeah, this is a dead ringer for an N plus one issue. If you ever see multiple queries that are nearly identical other than a particular ID, yep. That's an N plus one problem. So notice, let's just count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? It performed eight queries. And if we have a look in our database, within job listings, we have three, six, eight. Yep, eight records, eight SQL queries. Or if I had 100 records, then we'd have 100 SQL queries. So this is precisely where the N plus one problem comes from. For every single record, we will plus one to the SQL query count. It's a problem. It's something to be aware of. So while lazy loading can be helpful, if you're not thoughtful and aware of what's going on, sometimes these these performance issues can sneak their way in. All right, let's fix this. Return to your routes file. And let's extract this into its own variable. So I could say jobs equal job all. Okay, but now I want to tweak this. I want to implement eager loading. I'd like to say, give me all jobs with the employer for each one. So I will eager load the employer relationship. And here's how we do that. Job with, and then we reference the relationship name. And that relationship is defined right here. So that's where I'm getting that value. Job with employer, get me all of the results. Okay, so keep in mind with get, that's select star. We are grabbing all of the records. So if you had a million records in the database, you don't want this. You'd want to implement some kind of limiting or pagination. And we'll take a look at that soon. Okay, so now if I come back to my browser, let's give it a refresh. And it's still gonna work just like it did before. But now if I open up our query count, it has been reduced. Let's have a look here. All right, so now we only have two relevant queries. So we have one query to grab all of the job listings and then a second query that now eager loads all of the employers where the ID uh, is referenced from those job listings. So yeah, compare this to what we had before. Let's go back real quick. Job all. Refresh. Yeah, before we were lazy loading each item within that loop. So here's a query for employer two, employer three, employer five. It'll just keep going on and on. But when we tweak it to this, we are now eager loading the employer relationship as part of one single query. So even if we fetched 100 records from the database, we would still only have two SQL queries. And that's what we want. So you might decide that for your own projects, even though lazy loading is helpful, it might be a bit too risky for your preferences. So in these situations, if you want, you can disable the feature entirely. But yeah, I want to emphasize this point. I'm not leading the witness. I'm not suggesting it is too risky and you should disable it. I'm just saying it's an option if you prefer it. And I think you should make up your own mind on this particular issue. Uh, I find developers somewhat split down the middle. Uh, certain people disable it at the very beginning of the project and others feel like they know what they're doing. They know when they should eager load. It's not a concern for them. So you should decide for yourself. So let's imagine that you do want to disable the feature entirely. This will bring us to a new directory, app providers, and we only have one to start, app service provider. Okay, so you can think of this as a file for configuring your application however you need to. So in our case, I want to configure my app by disabling uh, lazy loading. All right, so we're going to do this in the boot method. The boot method is triggered after all of the project dependencies have been fully loaded. All right, so I'm going to reference our model right here, Illuminate Database Eloquent Model. And yeah, this is where IntelliSense is incredibly useful. I can now say prevent lazy loading. And if you're working on, be careful. There's also a prevents lazy loading method. That's not the one you want. That returns a Boolean. In our case, we want prevent lazy loading. All right, and that's it. So now have a look what happens here. Let's go back to my routes file, and I'm going to return this to a simple job all call that leads to lazy loading within our view. So if I come back to my browser and I refresh it, now we get a lazy loading violation exception. And this is specifically because of that one line that we added to app service provider. And it's really helpful. Hey, you attempted to lazy load the employer relationship on the job model. And where did you do that? Well, you did it in line nine of your jobs.blade view. And yep, there it is. 
lazy loading. Okay, so if we want to remove this screen, we have to solve the problem. So we solve it by eager loading the relationship. So once again, job with the relationship name, get me the results. And that's it. So we come back, give it a refresh, and we have solved that problem. Okay, so now we are eager loading our employer relationship. We have minimized the number of SQL queries. I think we're in really good shape. So in the next episode, we will move on to day 14. I'll see you then.